Ladies and gentlemen, my name is In the Game Kaya. Welcome to ITGK Survives Arc Tutorial Series. And we are here in Arc Survival Ascended. Um, like I said in the last video, I am restarting my tutorial series. But I wanted to go through because settings is one of the first things, and I've been promising my settings for like six months. Actually, I think it's been over six months now at this point. I am finally going to get around to posting uh, the settings because I've had enough time to test them. I feel like they're in a good spot. There's still some extra features I'd like to add in. Those features are not ready. Won't be ready for months. Honestly, probably won't be ready until close to 2025. If I'm being honest, it takes so much time to test that. I'm at a point now where I have to be able to get to and play through a significant chunk of the end game to test those settings. So that's going to have to wait uh, for the update. But I, in the meantime, I do have the settings ready, but I wanted to go ahead and make this video where I explain what each setting does. Because, yes, I like my settings. I think they're great for me, for the servers that I run, for the games that I run. But they're not necessarily going to be great for you. They're they're probably going to be great starting points, but you are going to have to probably tweak something here or there because this feels a little too fast or too slow. This feels a little too strong or too weak, uh, whatever it is. And instead of making a 40 minute settings video where I go through setting by setting and explain the whole thing, I wanna make the settings video shorter. So I'm just going to explain what each setting does here and then we will have the settings videos in a couple of weeks ready for the the launch of the center which i think is, is it tuesday anyways welcome to the arc main menu i uh, just press this button to start jump into the menu you will see uh, these three buttons this takes you to a mod page where you can download uh, install and update mods if you want to play with them. This takes you to the official servers list if you want to play on an unofficial server or on one of the official ones. There you go. You can do that there. Uh, handy search menu, a bunch of filters. But um, let's let's go in here. So you're going to start a single player session or a non dedicated session which uh, a non-dedicated session is multiplayer, like it's single player. But what I mean by that is you can invite your Steam friends or your PlayStation, Xbox friends, whatever, to your map, to your single player world, but they have to remain a short distance from you. They can't go wandering off on their own, go and do their own thing. You have to go everywhere together. It's not a bad way to play uh, multiplayer. I have played multiplayer with my brother doing that. Um, for various reasons, we weren't able to run a server, so we just played non-dedicated. It does work, but the, the tether has to be worked around. Um, if you come in here, you can see all of the mods that you downloaded on the other menu will show up here. If you just go ahead and activate a couple of them, they will show up here in the active mods list, and you can change their priority. The top mod on the list has the highest priority. It's considered the most important from the game, so if there's any kind of conflict or anything the game's gonna try and make it work something might get left out between one of the two mods it will prioritize the content from the mod higher on the list some mods need top priority i personally have yet to use a mod that needs top priority but they do exist uh, so keep that in mind read your mod description page before you just turn them on but that's how mods work now what map should you start i'm assuming uh you're probably new at Ark if you're watching this, so what map do you want to play first? The island is where the story starts. Ark does have a story. If you care about the story, I would play the island first. If you care about just quality of gameplay, the center, Ragnarok, Valguero, Fjorder, or the island, really. Uh, there may be some mod arcs that are pretty good for you. Uh, and a lot of those uh, maps won't be released for months yet. So right now, your answers are the island, or really anything that isn't Scorched Earth, because Scorched Earth starting on that is very difficult, and I would not recommend it if you're new to Ark. Like, 
you are going to die multiple, multiple times. And I, they made it easier, like, twice since it released, and it's still somewhat difficult. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get into these settings, and I'll just kind of go through them and explain what each one does setting by setting by setting. So, uh, player and creature, there are some settings that are, are carried over from one menu to another because they apply to different uh, classes, different parts of the game, even though it's technically the same setting. So it allows you to tweak different parts in different ways. So, like, this is player, so damage is how much damage you do. Uh, so, obviously, if you wanted to do double damage, you'd set this to two. Um, if you wanted to... Here's resistance. This is how much damage you take. If you wanted to take half damage, you'd set this to 0 0.5. Pretty simple, honestly. I will say, uh, when you use your fists to punch things, early in the game, it's mandatory to collect resources doing that. You take recoil damage based on the amount of damage that you do to what you're punching. You can kill yourself punching trees. You punch a tree so hard that you just fall over dead. So uh, keep that in mind. might want to be careful with how high you set the damage. I did almost forget this. Uh, there is a choose difficulty option at the bottom. You can just pick quick and dirty, easy, medium, hard. What do I want to get into? What difficulty do I want? Easy is basically, I do four times more damage, take four times less. Harvest rates are drastically improved. Taming rates are drastically improved. Bosses are way easier, all that stuff. Medium, I do double damage, take half the damage. Taming rates are improved. Harvest rates are improved. Bosses are e a little easier. Hard is what is considered the normal arc experience as of now. Uh, they, they change those settings from time to time. But those settings that they change are what this slider considers 1.0. So this menu might not change even if they change something in the game. Uh, keep that in mind. You say, oh, the, this does more damage now, or uh, this is easier, or we've increased the harvest rate on this, and this menu doesn't look like it changes. That's because the engine has changed and not the settings. So the settings modify what the engine is uh, telling the game. Okay, so we've got damage and resistance down. Now, Water Drain is just how fast the water stat on your character empties and how often you're going to have to drink. So you set it lower, below one, you have to drink less often, it'll drain slower. Over one, it'll drain faster, you'll have to drink more often. Same with Food Drain and Stamina Drain. And Stamina is going to, when you run out of Stamina, you um, are forced to stop sprinting or doing certain other actions like uh, flying. Although, this is for player, so it won't affect flying. That's more for creatures. Um, and you'll start to gain torpidity. Or basically, you'll start knocking yourself out because you're working so hard. So, you want to lower stamina drain, you'll have more stamina to work with. Or raise it, and you'll have less stamina to work with. Be a little bit harder on yourself. Health recovery. Uh, this is how fast, when you're not affected by any kind of debuff, how fast your health will regenerate over time. By default, it's 1.0. I have mine doubled. Um, again, you can set this stupid, stupid high. Like, this slider goes to 3. You can set this to 12. It functions at 12. It is actually 12 times faster. So, uh, if you set this high enough, you can out-heal damage that's being done to you. Very broken. Uh, if, you, if you set it super, super high. Harvesting damage. Uh, when you are gathering a resource node, how much damage do you do to that node? Because you have to, as you deplete its health, you collect more and more of a percentage of the resources that it's giving out. So, the higher your harvesting damage, the more damage you do to a resource node, and so you'll greater gather chunks of resources faster. For creatures, max count is how many wild creatures there are. One is the default. You can set this to less than one. You can set it to more than one. Uh, I would not recommend setting it much higher than probably two. Because there are very dangerous creatures like Spinosaurus that generate in what are considered safe and easy areas. They just have a low chance to spawn. 
but by increasing the count, you naturally increase the number of more dangerous dinosaurs that you're going to find, and you can make it very hard on yourself early in the game. And ultimately, even after you get past that point, it could still be annoying to have to deal with other uh, creatures that are more of a nuisance than anything more often than you should. Damage, resistance, food drain, stamina drain, health recovery, and harvesting damage. These are all the same as they are for player, uh, for the player, but they are for your creatures. And harvesting damage is naturally higher than one on creatures. That's just normal. Again, I have my health recovery doubled. I think harvesting damage is normally 3.2. I am turret damage. This is uh, how much damage a turret will deal to creatures, tamed or wild. In PvE, you won't use turrets too often, although they do come up from time to time, uh, depending on what you're trying to build. More so in PvP, this will be important. You could reduce the number... It's more of an advanced setting, but you could reduce the number of turrets um, that are available in an area and increase the damage to make it less grindy. There's all kinds of cool things you can do with these settings uh, it, when you combine settings together. But ultimately, this this is the, the damage effect. So you set this to 2, you'll do double damage from any turret that shoots at a creature. Disable taming and disable riding is exactly what it sounds like. I personally always leave these off. I do think a disable riding server could be cool. Not sure about a disable taming server, but they're here if you want them. For structures, uh, this is how much damage a structure does, like a spiked wall if you place it on the ground. Let's say it by default does 18 damage. I don't actually know off the top of my head how much damage a spiked wall does, but let's just say it's 18 damage. If you set this to four times, it'll do 72 damage instead of 18. And resistance is how much damage a structure takes from creatures, from environmental effects, from you punching the ground accidentally when you were trying to access something's inventory. It does happen, um, but yeah, so if you set this, again, uh, less than one means you take less damage on your structures, more than one means you take more damage on your structures. And after a structure's been damaged, there's a cooldown before it can be repaired, that's this here, it's in seconds, there you go right there. And structure placement collision. When you place structures on the ground, like let's say you place the foundation, you start building foundations, they snap to each other after you push the first, put the first one down at the same level, perfectly level. But the ground you're building on may not be perfectly level. So you might clip into the ground because it's built somewhat on a hill, and now you can't place this foundation here because it's built on a hill. If you turn this on, then you can build the, the foundation further down into the ground or over into the wall or, or whatever. You can even clip structures inside of each other. Like if you have a, a couple of different crafting stations that you want to build, you can put them clipped inside of each other and do some interesting things that way. In PvP, I would leave it off. But for PvE, usually not an issue. Could leave it on. I like to leave it on. For the world, XP multiplier. This is a global multiplier for all XP, which you can modify here on a case-by-case -case basis. If you want better XP, I would adjust it here in this XP multipliers menu, not here, unless you absolutely have to. I mean, if you want just flat two times more XP, just I guess that's easy, but I like to adjust it on a case-by-case -case basis. I think it's better. Then if you think you're getting too much XP from this or not enough from this, you can adjust just that and not have to worry about anything else. Taming speed. When you are taming a dinosaur, uh, every time you feed it or interact with it, it gets a percentage of tamed. So if you set this to two, then you get double the percentage of tamed. Set it to four, it's four times the percentage. Uh, harvest yield. Every time you interact with a resource node to try and harvest it, you get a, a collection of resources. So this is a multiplier on what you get back out of that node. For instance, there are stones on the beach. You can pick up each stone. It's one stone each. You set this to two, now you're getting two stone each time you pick up. Pretty simple. Flat multiplier. Speed leveling. There is an 
as you gain experience in the game, you can level up stats. One of the stats you were able to level up in Ark Survival Evolved was movement speed for players and creatures. They disabled it by default in ASA. You can still turn it on. The game has been rebalanced slightly so that you don't need to have movement speed turned on. It's not really an issue, but if you want to turn it on, it is there. I will say if your computer is not super strong, leveling a flyer speed like crazy like this is flyer speed leveling you can turn this on and players and land dinos can have their speed level but not flyers unless you turn this on as well so um if you level a flyer speed to crazy speeds you can lag your computer really really bad uh, just because you're moving around the map so fast a uh, maximum difficulty Maps change what their difficulty scale is, which affects quality of loot, difficulty of bosses, um, and what level dinos spawn at at maximum, and what they get tamed to at maximum. That's on a map-to-map -map basis. But the game is also designed to run with dinos and other difficulty scales all set to 5, so dinos would scale from level 5 to level 150 in increments of 5. That's what maximum difficulty does. It sets those creatures to spawn in increments of 5. That's the most important thing that it does. It does make bosses slightly more difficult to compensate for that. But almost everyone plays with this on. If you play on an official server, this will be on. And if you don't have this on, that's what this slider is for. It does not work if you set it higher than 1. Higher than one might as well be one. So, um, I believe by default the island has dinos that spawn up to level 120. So, that's in increments of four. So, if you were to set this to, say, 0 0.5, it would spawn dinos in increments of two up to level 60. But it would also affect the quality of loot that you get and the difficulty of bosses. Uh, to compensate for that. So you just scale for the experience that you want, but most people are going to give you advice and play games based on this right here with maximum difficulty turned on. PvE mode disables you attacking things that are not wild or part of your tribe. So if they're tamed, domesticated in any way, part of a different tribe or unclaimed, you're not allowed to deal damage, pick them up, or interact with them in any way. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. I recommend that even if you're playing PvE, I recommend leaving this off and play PvP. Because there are certain things that you kind of have to do. You don't actually have to do, but it's just far more efficient to do it that way. But you literally can't do it with PvP, and I'll get to that in a second um, in one of these other... Uh, settings it's in the xp settings actually it has to do with a method of gaining xp specifically for your boss army if you have pve mode turned on it flat out doesn't work and it's by far the best way to do it so um you just play in pvp even if you're having a pve experience if you're worried about griefers or something like that you could totally turn it on it's not going to make the game unplayable in any way i just i just uh, always play in pvp mode hardcore mode when you die your character gets completely reset to level zero and you lose access to your tames your buildings all of that stuff um not definitely not for beginners like it says it is hardcore so uh, you know, be careful if you turn that on. Know what you're getting yourself into. Even I don't really play on hardcore mode, like, ever. Like, I've tried it. It's definitely hard. Very hard. If you do wipe in hardcore mode and you are getting reset, I recommend you back out to the menu, delete the save, and go back in. Because you're going to have to work around your structures, your old tames, any kind of defenses that you've put up. Um any XP notes that you've come across aren't going to get reset, so just go delete the save and, and go back in and make it clean. Unlimited respects. An important part of playing endgame arc is statting yourself for crafting skill. 
you need to respect yourself to do that. Respec wipes all of your learned engrams. Those are things that you can build, things that you know how to build as a player. So it wipes all of that and it wipes all of your invested stats and you get to re-level up and relearn what it is exactly that you want to be able to build. So you can wipe all your stats and put it all into crafting skill and get good blueprints, which you kind of need to do for bosses. If you don't have this on, it's a 24 hour timer before you can respec again. And if you're playing single player, you're not running a server, that means 24 hours of game time, actual play time. Not, oh, I did it at 2 o'clock today, I'm going to build this stuff and get off in half an hour, and then tomorrow I'm going to log in at 2 o'clock and it'll be ready to go again. No, that's not how it works. 24 hours of playtime. So keep that in mind if you turn this off. If you have a big server, it can lag the server, especially if you have auto engrams turned on. Definitely definitely uh, leave that off then. But then you're running a server, so it's literally only a day until people can respec instead of having to continue to play with, with bad stats. For rules, these are pretty much all preference. It's uh, very self-explanatory. Um, some of these can be set on a person-to-person -person basis, so even if you, let's say you prefer to play with no crosshair, you leave this on, you can still turn it off for yourself, but leave it on for anybody else who wants to use it. So you can turn it off on a person-to-person -person basis, but if the server has it off, you can't turn it on even if you want it on. Um, these downloads things, uh, when you interact with an obelisk or a loot drop, you can upload items yourself, creatures that you have, and then you can download them somewhere else. So this allows you to disable people downloading them on this save, on the server, whatever. Gamma is changing brightness. Uh, you have to input cheats in order to do that, but um, most people leave it on. It's just kind of become part of playing the game at this point. Honestly, it's hardly even needed in ASA with the uh, what they've done to nighttime and low light. Creative mode puts a ticker in the menu, the pause menu, that allows you to switch to creative mode easy instead of inputting a cheat. Loot crates. There are better ways of nerfing loot crates than disabling them. If you want to disable them, that, that option is here, but you can change the quality of the loot that you get out of crates if you feel they're too overpowered instead of just turning them all the way off. You can turn them off if you want to, but if it's just because they're overpowered, I would recommend nerfing them first because you kind of still need decently high level blueprints in order to beat the bosses in most cases. Still, like I said, it's not impossible uh, to play with loot crates turned off without those blueprints and things like that. It just gets more difficult and not just more difficult, but way more grindy. Uh, friendly fire, self-explanatory, single player settings. Even if you are a single player, not playing on a server, you're just playing in this menu here that we're in. I still recommend that you turn this off. It changes harvest rates, taming rates, bosses, dino stats, all, all kinds of stuff to make the game far easier for one player, and it changes the experience a little bit. And in ways that you can't tweak in this menu are, are more difficult to tweak in this menu and some things you literally can't so um, a lot of people even people that play by themselves leave single player settings turned off and just uh, buff their settings for themselves or their single player world as if it was a multiplayer world but with rates and stats and things like that that make it easier to play for single player all right now let's go to advanced. In PvE, in the advanced section, uh, these are some PvE specific settings. You can have the game toggle PvE versus PvP mode on a timer based on the arc itself or based on the time of the computer slash server that you're running it on. Um, and this is when it starts and stops, when it switches. Uh, tribe alliances allows you in PvP to form alliances with other tribes for various reasons. 
Um, and in, there are more advanced settings to limit how many alliances you can be in, and this and that and the other thing. Uh, usually not too big of a deal. Uh, allow tribe war allows you, even in PvE, to engage in some low-level PvP. And if you have tribe war on, I would recommend tribe war cancel on. So basically you would go up to somebody and pull up a menu and declare war on them. And it would be PvP versus just you guys. But this allows you to cancel that at any time. Um, then you can uh, disable gamma settings across the server if you want. Building in caves, on or off, is personal preference. I won't judge you either way. Um, you can kind of cheese caves with cave building on, but you can do some really cool things with cave building on. So, you know, like I said, personal preference. Uh, this is just when you walk into a cave, can you build? Yes or no? Right there. Uh, structure decay. A after you log off, a timer begins. It's seven days long. After you haven't logged in for seven days, your structures will start to disappear and your dinos will become claimable by other tribes. This is, do you want structure decay? Do you want dino decay? And a multiplier on that seven day timer. Higher than one is longer, less than one is shorter. Flyer carry. Uh, this is a PVE specific uh, ticker. Can you carry other creatures and players as a flyer? Like when, let's say you have an Argentavis, you fly down, can you scoop something up in your talents even though it's not part of your tribe? Yes or no? Uh, I know official servers used to have this off. I don't know if they still do. I, I haven't played on official in a while. So if you know that, leave that in the comments section below. I'd really appreciate to know that. Even though I don't play official, it could come in handy uh, if someone else asks a question. Structure prevention volumes prevents you from building in specific areas where there are really good resources or, or whatever. Uh, just to protect those from getting built over because if you build there, those resources don't spawn anymore. So kind of makes it easier for people to find those rare resources they want. Uh, diseases. There are a couple of diseases in the game. This just turns them off. Some of them are pretty minor. Some are more major. Uh, you can just completely disable them or make it so that when you die, that's what this is. If, if you die, then you lose their um, disease. And then um, can you take a flying dino into a cave. Now you can ride a flying dino into the mouth of the cave, but at a certain point it will kick you off, and if you get off you can't get back on. So you take this on, you can just fly a dino into a cave whenever. Uh, for PvP, this is that dino decay setting again. Uh, structure platform prevention, there are certain structures that cannot be placed directly on a platform saddle or on a raft or boat. This overrides that, so you can just uh, put them on there whatever uh change respawn interval when you are killed in pvp in an active pvp basically by an enemy tribe then there's a cooldown before you can respawn again if it's a random pve death or whatever you can just respawn right away but if it's a pvp cooldown uh pvp kill there's this 59 second cooldown then every time you die again before this many seconds has passed so this is five minutes so if you die by PV PvP, there's a 59 second cooldown. If you die again before 5 minutes, then that 59 second cooldown is restarted and multiplied by 2. So 59 becomes a minute 58. And then it gets multiplied by 2 again. So it would be almost 4 minutes if you die again. If you go 5 minutes without dying, then you're fine. It goes back to 59 seconds. Zone structure damage is for caves. When you build in caves, it can be really hard to raid, so they, if you are raiding a base that is in a cave, you do six times more damage to structures to make it easier to raid. That's what this is. You can make this 1.0, and you just do regular damage. You can increase it if you want. And then this is uh, how far around a structure resources will grow. How, how far away from the structure do you have to walk before resources start growing again? Uh, for the world, this is how long a day is, so uh, higher than one is shorter day, less than one is longer day. 
This is just the day part of the day, just the night part of the day, same thing. Override initial time of day is when you first start the game. You change what time because you pretty much start just before noon uh, when you start a server or a single player save. You can make that earlier in the day. You could make it start at night, whatever. And this is uh, that setting. Like, um, if you have this turned on, then it reads this number. It overrides the start of the day. Uh, spoiling time changes how long it takes for things to spoil. More than one it takes longer for things to spoil, less than one shorter time. Item decomposition time, when you throw items on the ground, how long until they do spawn. Higher than one, more than two minutes. Less than one, shorter than two minutes. Uh, corpse decomposition time, if you or your dino dies, the corpse isn't harvested, it's just sitting there on the ground, how long until it despawns. Higher than one is longer, less than one is shorter. There's that no resource radius again uh, on a player or structure basis. Harvest health is uh, each resource node has it basically a health bar, think of it as. And so as you take chunks off of that health bar, every time you pass a threshold of health dealt, you get a certain percentage of the resources it's going to give you if you completely harvest it. So harvest health increases the amount of health that it has, but not the resources that it gives you. Those rocks that I mentioned before on the beach, they're one each. If you have it set to harvest rate one and you double your harvest health, you'll have to pick up the same rock twice to get one stone. That's kind of how it works. Uh, resource respawn interval. If you put it lower than one, resources will respawn faster after you completely harvest them. Higher than one, it takes them longer to respawn. Crop growth speed, pretty self-explanatory. Decay speed, if your crops aren't fertilized or irrigated, they will decay faster or slower. Uh, if you have it higher than one, they decay faster, less than one, they decay slower. Poop interval, how often people poop. Um, poop is an important part of the game. It sounds funny, but it is true. You use poop to make fertilizer and to feed and tame dung beetles. So poop is actually kind of important. So higher numbers mean you poop more often, Short, uh, smaller numbers mean you poop less often. Mating interval. By default, the mating interval is two days. I'm going to do these numbers off the top of my head. I apologize if they're inc incorrect, but they should be fairly accurate. I think the mating interval by default for multiplayer is two days, 48 hours. So I have it set to an eighth of that, which is two hours two hours mm, anyways so I, I think I have it set to, to two hours maybe it was max 48 hours 24 to 48 hours anyways so I, I have it set to eight times shorter here uh, so as you bring the number closer to zero creatures can mate more often you can set it to flat zero and creatures will just continuously begin gestating babies or laying fertilized eggs, just non-stop. Um, lay egg interval. This is for non-fertilized eggs. This is important when it comes to making kibble. So if you have it set to less than one, a creature will lay eggs, non-fertilized eggs, faster uh, more often and if you have it set to higher than one it'll be less often then there's the egg hatch speed when you drop a fertilized egg on the ground there's so long before it hatches so I have mine set to 10 times faster um, that changes on an egg to egg basis uh, then mature speed here is the the next part of it the mature speed is how long it takes them once the egg hatches or the baby finishes gestation before it's fully grown. Mine is 30 times faster. I think it takes over seven days for a Giga to become fully grown. It's one of the most powerful creatures in the game. So 30 times faster, kind of, kind of important. Still multiple hours. 
Uh, baby cuddle interval. By default, this is once every eight hours. I have it set to an eighth of that, so that's uh, once every hour. As a creature grows up, it wants to be interacted with from time to time, and that gives it a percentage of imprint up to 100%. That imprint gives them a percentage boost on a handful of their stats, like, uh, like damage or speed or stamina or whatever. But you can disable that buff here. You can allow anyone, even if they're not you and you're raising the dino, you can allow anyone to do that, to imprint on the dino here. You'll still be the only one to get the imprint boost but you can allow anyone to raise it for you. There's a grace period after it wants a cuddle, it wants to be imprinted on. Uh, there's a grace period before it starts losing the percentage of imprint that it would get from that interaction. This is the size of that. More than one, bigger size of window. And this is, after you're outside that window, how fast it loses that imprint quality. And this is the amount that those stats are boosted when you imprint on it. So you can make it more powerful, less powerful, whatever. Okay, these next three I would not change unless you are... Um, unless you are, like, really knowledgeable about the game. Because changing these settings can have drastic... Even small changes can have drastic impact on how powerful things are in your game, how overpowered they get. I know uh, there's a server I was playing on the other day. Uh, it was an unofficial server, and the guy had set these settings in a certain way, was completely overpowered and insane. Within five minutes, you had dinos that were capable of one-shotting bosses by themselves. Just, you know, walk in, too much health, too much damage can't be killed, bosses fall, one dino. You're supposed to take 20 in. Uh, it was, was nuts. Uh, he kind of likes it nuts, he wanted it nuts, even he admitted he had gone too far, because he didn't understand exactly how it worked. Uh, what these are, are modifiers on the stats that dinos get when they're wild, when they're tamed, or on the player character themselves. So these are each individual stat categories. Health, stamina, oxygen, food, water, weight, damage, speed, fortitude, torpidity, and temperature really don't matter. So if you, this is a 1.0 multiplier, you set this to two, that's double the health. You set stamina to two, that's double the stamina. Okay, that gets even more insane when you consider what these uh, per level health damage numbers are. I have my speed modified here, but um, these are supposed to be less than one, far less than one. That's how the game has been balanced for. To make it so that tame dinos can't just completely and utterly destroy wild dinos. If you set this to one, you will roll roughshod over everything in your way. Same for this, and this, same for this, and this. If you want to adjust something, um, to make something a little bit easier, you could, like, make health 1.1, you can make damage 1.1, just to give it that little bit more juice right here in Wild. Um, I, I like to mess with the weight stat on servers if you're going to be really grindy and um, running resources a lot. You can double the weight here here, 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 um, some things that you might want to do. Uh, player stats are more likely to get messed with than the dino stats. Uh, again, these are how much you get per level. This does not change what you have at base. It's all 100 uh, at base, except for oxygen, which is 150. But this is a percentage of what you would get every time you level something up. So health, you get 10 points per level. You set it to 2, you get 20 points per level. Oxygen, you get 20 points per level. So you set it to 2, you get 40. Just keep that in mind. Um, you should know what you're doing in ARC and what the game plays like and what tweaking these sliders is going to do and what kind of effect it's going to have before you really start messing with them. I don't recommend that you touch these until you're very experienced with the game. By that point, you'll probably know if something's off, how to fix it, or by how much. And finally, um, 
the XP multipliers. Uh, the generic kind of touches on everything. It does also adjust how much experience is gained passively, like just standing still you gain XP. And the generic slider affects how much passive XP that you get. Um, harvest is when you are harvesting a resource node, you or your dino, do you get more XP or less? These are all multipliers. When you craft an item or a blueprint, how much XP do you get? When you find an explorer note, there are two things. First of all, you get an XP buff. This That's not affected by this. Secondly, you get a burst of instant XP that is affected by this. Um, if you know where notes are, they can be really, really powerful. I have mine set to 0 0.5. I could see you running 0 0.25 or even flat zero, but there are plenty of people who just set it to one. They just go and run a bunch of notes and they basically start the game at maximum level. If you know what you're doing, you can do that. That's why I have mine turned down, so I can't do that. Uh, special, I actually don't know what special XP slider does. So if, if anyone does know, by the way, um, I would appreciate it if you leave it in the comments down below. If you find out, or if you just already know, go ahead and let me know. I don't know what special cases are, because it says it modifies XP in special circumstances. So I don't. I just leave it at one. I, I don't know. Um, kill. Everything under kill, all these different categories, they all feed through this multiplier here. And again, every single one of these multipliers feeds back into the XP multiplier we saw earlier over here. So keep that in mind here. So you don't just want to set kill to two and then um, like wild creature kill to two and think you're going to get double XP. You're actually going to get four times XP because you're getting double from wild creature and then double again from kill. So um, remember that. But uh, when you kill a boss, how much XP do you get? Kill an alpha, how much XP? Kill creatures in caves, which are a little bit higher level, a little bit more dangerous. Just creatures out in the wild. Creatures that are tamed and part of an enemy tribe. Creatures that are domesticated, but have not been claimed by any tribe. This is the important thing I was talking about earlier when I said you want to play PvP. One of the number one ways to level up your boss army is to hatch a whole bunch of fertilized eggs of the creatures you're raising for your boss army and use a fully grown creature to just kill a whole bunch of the babies and mass. And if you have your game set to PvE, you can't do that. You can adjust how much XP you get here uh, for that if you want to make it far easier on yourself you're like double it quadruple it whatever um honestly you're already grinding xp so you know if you want to adjust this to two or four this is already in the end game you're probably not going to break the game if you set it to like 15 you're really not uh you're not going to get that crazy so i i wouldn't i wouldn't personally set it that high if you want to it's really not going to be as insane as it sounds Miscellaneous is uh, just some other things, uh, these settings that don't fit in any other menu. You can limit the number of maximum players in a tribe, how much XP a player can get at max, how much XP a creature can get at max. I would recommend not touching any of these, just leave them all to default. Um, unless you're going to customize your level curve, and you're not going to be able to do that here without editing your INI. Uh, unaligned basing for flyer platforms. This allows you, when you build a platform saddle on a Quetzal, uh, can other things be affected by the saddle personally? Can they land on it? Can they ride around on it? I like to have it on. I think it allows for some more dynamic uh, gameplay opportunities. There are reasons to have it turned off. I've never really seen a personal need to turn it off, so I just have it on. Passive defenses, uh, hurt right over Stinos. This is for those spike walls we talked about earlier. Uh, you can have it set so that those spiked walls do not hurt wild dinos. They just treat them like regular walls. And this only damages enemy tribe creatures that are currently being ridden if you have it off. Personally, I play PvE most of the time. I'm putting up the defenses to protect from wild dinos that might be coming over to try and eat the tame. 
and protect it. So that's kind of why I have it here, so I, I leave it on. Uh, you, you can set that however you want. Allow specific engrams. This engrams list here, you can turn things off and on, like I just disabled trains there by double clicking it. I'll turn it back on. Um, you can turn that black list into a white list with this. Uh, raid dino feeding. Some dinos in the game are so powerful, they are considered raid class dinos. And so by default, you cannot uh, feed that creature. So its food stat will just drain. It's Then when its food is empty, its health will just drain. And then it's dead. You have to go tame a new one. It's to prevent you from just owning a whole bunch of these ridiculously powerful dinos. If you allow raid dino feeding, even if you don't, this is how fast uh, that food drains, so you have to feed it more often, or you have less time with it before it dies. You can disable photo mode. PvP? Definitely turn this on. Um, I've seen people exploit this in PvP on unofficial in so many different ways. So if it's PvP, I would say just turn it on, unless you're just kind of goofing around some friendly PvP. PvE really it probably doesn't matter. And this is how far that photo mode range is. Custom recipes allow you to bake or uh, cook things, foods and drinks using a cooking pot. So you can turn that on or off. Uh, the overall effectiveness of those recipes, how much of a, how much your crafting skill plays a factor in the effectiveness of that recipe. This is the overall effectiveness of crafting skill on things like blueprints or custom recipes. Here's that supply crate loot and fishing loot slider that I was talking about before. This is, <coughs> excuse me. This is based on what you would get by default for your difficulty. So if you're playing on difficulty five, you're gonna get difficulty five caliber loot. You set this to 2, you're going to get difficulty 10 caliber loot. And that's some insane loot. Like, the loot is already good. So, you're going to get some absolutely bonkers loot if you increase this. Or, if you're like me and you think it's a little too good, you can turn it down. You can set it this to 0 0.8, I think I have, on one set of uh, settings that I have. You can set it to 0 0.5, whatever. If, if you do turn it down too far... You will start to run into the same issue that I said earlier, like if you disable crates, you kind of need to pull high level blueprints from drops in order to beat bosses. But there are other ways around that, breeding creatures with higher health, higher melee, it's just going to take a lot more work and a lot more time. So uh, you can adjust that here on a more finite scale versus just turning things on and off. And if you go fishing, there's a chance that you get loot from the fish instead of just fish meat. That's what this is for, is uh, that fishing loot quality separately. Fuel consumption, this is how often something that consumes fuel, like a campfire consuming wood or uh, an electrical generator consuming gas, how often that happens. So if you set it to higher than one you're going to have less and less fuel shorter than one more and more fuel i'm pretty sure that's how it works i usually just leave it at one platform structure limit when you build a on a platform saddle raft or boat of other some other kind uh there's a limit to how many structures can be put on it i have mine set to 100 by default it's one i like to build potentially some some crazy structures it's very least i like to have that opportunity that option open to me um, if you are playing PvP, absolutely do not put this above, like, one. <clears throat> so, it, it, you can build some stupid stuff. Um, there's a, another setting you can't see here that allows you to change how far away you can build as well. Uh, and I like to turn that up, too, just to build some kind of cool, kind of impressive builds, if I can. But again, for PvP, absolutely broken. I would not recommend doing that. And then floating damage text. This just shows some glowing numbers every time you do damage or something else does damage to you. Let you know how much damage has been done. Personal preference, on or off, it's up to you. And when you're done, click save. Um, and then go over here to arcs. 
and click the arc that you want to start. And then you can choose single player non-dedicated and you're ready to go. So, thank you guys for watching this video. It was a long one. I hope it was helpful to you. I tried to explain everything as best as I could. Uh, I know I probably got some things wrong, especially like going over breeding race. I tried to do it off the top of my head. It did not sound right to me at the time. So I will just um, leave a correction in the pinned comment. Any other corrections, people let me know. I'll put that down there too. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, comment, let me know what I can do better, what else you want to see. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date on the latest tutorials that come out. And potentially, I am running a series where I personally play through ARC and you can see what my journey is like and see what kind of skills I have and what kind of uh, adventures I go through as I play through the ARC. And thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.